Welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to crochet my running rings around granny teapot. This is one of the first patterns that I ever designed and released and I have to say it's been one of my best-selling pattern PDFs since its launch, inception, whatever you want to call it. And the reason being is it has that really cute kitsch vintage style. It uses one of my favourite stitches and because it's worked in rounds, you can change colours to create some really great combinations. Now, before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out another one of the crochet tutorials or patterns again. So this pattern has been written for a traditional six cup teapot. So your teapot size can of course vary depending on the style of teapot. This teapot has a wide opening to allow for an upper or a lower spout and has a handle opening which will fit around this style handle. Now this teapot measures from handle to spout roughly seven, seven and a half inches but the openings will allow you to have a bit of flexibility in that and height wise I measure from the top to the floor because it has a closed top and that measures about seven inches, maybe seven and a half inches tall. I really should treat myself to a new tape measure. Anywho, so that's the standard six cup size teapot that we're making this for. Now materials wise, you really don't need a lot of yarn to make this. It can be a scrap project. You can work it up using a variegated yarn or like me, you can choose some of your favorite colors. This pattern looks amazing worked up in pastels, in bold colours, in kind of shades that vary, which is the original style. And I'm going bold this time with my colour choices. So I'm using some scrap paint box yarns, Simply DK. So this is a size three yarn. It's 100% acrylic and I would recommend that you use anything other than cotton. Ideally, you need a yarn with a bit of a stretch to it to accommodate for the changing sizes of teapots if you're not making it for your own. But also because acrylic animal fibres, they will have more heat retaining properties. As pretty as these teapot cosies are, they do have a purpose and it is to keep your tea warm all the way through to the last drop. So I'm going to be using 100% acrylic. I have previously also worked up teapots using... At merino for those really special afternoon teas but this time I'm just using a nice basic DK weight acrylic. Now the shades that I'm using today is this lovely sunny yellow and the shade number is 121. I cannot remember it might be banana or something I'm not sure what this shade is actually called. I've got my paper white I know this is bubblegum pink because it's one of my favorite shades and the shade number is 150 for the pink and I think it's 100 yeah, for the paper white. Oh, and I had one just off camera, which is going to be this beautiful green. It does go with my green teapot, but I also have a pink teapot and I have another colour as well. I can't remember what other colour that one is. Uh, I've got a black teapot. I've got multiple teapots because I just absolutely love them. Uh, this shade number is 67. Again, I think it's sage green or something, but I just love this deep green colour. Now I'm using four colours to really maximise the impact of all these colour changes. As I said, you can use a variegated yarn that changes colour for you. Not sure about self-striping, it hasn't been written for that, as in it's not specifically allocated to a self-striping yarn. But it'll work up fine if you have any to hand. But you only need about 50 metres per colour, so a total of 200 metres to make the whole teapot cosy. So if we're using roughly 50 metres of each colour, it has a total meterage of about 200, probably just under 200 metres for the whole teapot cosy. Now hook wise, we're going to be using the recommended hook size for a DK size 3 weight, which is a 4 millimetre hook. This is for us to achieve a size fitting for a 6 cup teapot. If you're working to make a larger or a smaller teapot cosy, you might need to adjust the hook size to get the same size. Of course, you're gonna need a darning needle and a pair of scissors because there are gonna be ends, but that's okay. We're gonna weave in some of those as we go. So gather all of your materials and let's get started. 
I should also mention you are going to need some stitch markers later on in this pattern and that's going to help us decide where we place the openings for our spout and our handle. So have those four stitch markers to hand so we can use those as well. So pop those out of the way and grab my first colour. So with colour A we're going to start by making a slip knot. and placing that onto our hook. We're then going to start by making a chain of four. So we yarn over the hook and pull through four times. So that's one, two, three and four. We're then going to slip stitch back into that first chain that we made to create a ring. So there's one, two, three. So we're slip stitching into that first chain that we made so pull through and straight through the loop on our hook and this will create a ring. You may find that you have an extra hole where you slip stitched but we're going underneath that hole right into the middle of that ring. We're then going to start with a chain of three. So we yarn over the hook and pull through three times. So that was one, two and three. Now this chain three counts as our first US double crochet, the same as a UK treble crochet. We're then gonna work a further 11 double crochets into the center of that ring, and we're gonna work over this end at the same time. So we yarn over the hook, find that middle hole, then insert our hook into the middle. I'm leaving that tail against that ring so that we're weaving in that end at the same time. We yarn over, bring up our loop. We should have three loops on our hook before we yarn over, pull through those first two loops, yarn over and pull through the last two. We're gonna do this a further 10 times. So that counts as our first one. We've just made our second, we have another 10 to make. So we yarn over and we're reinserting back into that middle hole again. So we yarn over, insert, keeping working over our end yarn over to bring our loop up, yarn over, we're pulling through those first two loops, yarn over and pull through the last two loops. We're going to continue to repeat this until we have a total of 12 double crochets, remembering that this chain three counts as our first double crochet. So that's one, two, three, yarn over for number four and insert back into the middle of that ring, yarn over and pull through those first two, yarn over and pull through the last two. So continue to make so continue to make those double crochets until you have a total of 12 double crochets including your chain 3 and I'll meet you at the end of round 1. So I'm just working my final double crochet back into the center of that ring and then we're going to check our stitch count. I'm going to bring up my loop for a moment. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now, the reason that I counted my posts rather than my stitcher counts at the top, you know, the actual V's at the top. I just find it easier. If you want to count your stitches, just remember that the top of that chain of three does count as your first stitch. So you should have a total of 12 double crochets worked into the middle of that ring. And to join round one, we're gonna slip stitch into the top of that starting chain three. So we've got one, two, there's the top of our chain three. So we're just inserting our hook into that top of the chain three, yarning over, pull through, and straight through the loop on our hook. So at the end of round one, I'm gonna be changing color to my next colour. If you're working in one colour or you're using a self-striping yarn, you don't need to fasten off. If, like me, you're changing colour every round, just simply snip, leaving a nice long tail. Use your hook to bring that through and that will secure that last slip stitch. We're then going to bring in our next colour. Now you can join your new colour in any one of these stitches around. To keep on top of things, I kind of do all my joins in the same place because then I know that I've not lost any stitches. So I'm going to reinsert my hook into the top of that chain three that we just 
slip stitched into. Just insert that through my hook, place my new yarn over the top, holding both ends, I'm just gonna pull through. Now once I've pulled through, I'm gonna make sure that I've got that tail of the last color we worked just held against the end of our project and then bring it back so that I have a smaller loop here. For round two, we're going to continue by working a starting chain of three. So we yarn over and pull through once, twice, three times. We're then gonna work a second double crochet into the same stitch. This chain three counts as the first stitch as our round. I'm just gonna make sure I've got my ends ready to work over. I'm yarning over and reinserting my hook into the same space that my joined my yarn into, working over my ends and holding them securely, yarning over and bringing a loop up before I can work my pull through two and pull through two. Let's check that that's nice and tight. There we go. So our first chain three counts as our first stitch and then we have our second stitch in the next. For this round, we're gonna be working two US double crochets into each stitch around or two UK treble crochets, depending on which terms you use. So we're gonna work into the next stitch and again, I'm gonna work over my ends. So we yarn over the hook. Here's our next stitch. Just gonna insert underneath that, make sure that my ends placed over my hook, yarn over, bring a loop up, pull through two, pull through two, and then we're working a second double crochet into the same stitch that we've just worked. So we yarn over, insert, yarn over, bring a loop up, pull through two, and pull through two. By working two stitches into the same stitch, we're gonna be doubling our stitch count from 12 in round one to 24 by the end of round two. So we're just gonna continue working two double crochets into the top of each stitch around. So continue to repeat that and I will So continue to repeat that and I will meet you at the end of round 2 where we're going to be joining to the top of that chain 3 again. I'll see you in a moment. One thing I didn't mention is if like me you've got a bit of a hole in the middle there with your original starting tail if you pull that if you've worked over it it will close that hole for you and we're going to secure that together at the end just so it looks like it should do. <laughs> now at the end of round two you should have 24 treble, you should have 24 US double crochets. So I'm just going to count at the base making sure I've got two stitches coming out. Our starting chain counted as a stitch so we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22 and 4. We're then going to slip stitch into the top of our chain 3. So 1, 2 and 3. It's smaller than I'd like but it's there. I'm just going to insert my hook into the top of that chain 3 and then slip stitch to join and that joins that next round. And then once again I'm fastening off because I'm changing colours to colour C. So I'm just going to fasten off, leaving a tail, pull up with my hook, and then we're ready to join our next colour. Once we have our third colour, we're joining in a slightly different place this time. We're not joining in the stitch, we're joining between the pairs of stitches. So where we have two stitches coming out, we're going to insert our hook between a pair. I'm going to make sure I go in between this space here where we've just joined. It's just easier for me to keep track and get these ends woven in. So once you've, as you can see, move that end out of the way. I'm just going in between a pair of stitches here. I've got two stitches coming out of the same stitch and we can join either side of there if we want to. So in my case, I'm gonna join where we've just fastened off. I'm gonna place the yarn over the hook and bring it through that space between the two stitches and make sure I've got my ends in place. We're going to make a chain of three. 
which counts as our first US double crochet and the same as a UK treble crochet. This time we're going to work a further three double crochets into that same space between the stitches. So we yarn over the hook and insert, yarn over, bring a loop up, pull through two, pull through two. We yarn over to work the third into that same space again. So pull through two and pull through two. I'm just going to tighten my beginning chain. And I'm going to leave my ends because we're skipping over this stitch. I don't want to have those ends trailing across as well. So I'll weave those in at the end. So we're going to then work in between the next pair of stitches. So we yarn over the hook, skip the next two stitches, working into the space between the posts. So you can see that you've got those twos there and there's that space in between. So we've yarned over, insert, to work three double crochets into that same space. So we yarn over to work the second and then again reinsert for the third. You can see that it starts to accentuate the spaces between these pairs of stitches and that's the look we're looking for. So we're going to yarn over, skip the next two and work into the space between again, placing three double crochets. So that was one, two and three. We're going to repeat this all the way around and once again our stitch count is going to increase and at the end of round three, you'll have a stitch count of 36 because we're adding 12 extra stitches by working three double crochets into each of these spaces between the stitches. Continue to repeat this around and I'll meet you at the end of round three. So at the end of round three, you should now have 36 double crochets or 12 times three double crochets. Depends which way you prefer to count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Once again we're going to slip stitch to the top of that chain three. One, two, three. Insert your hook into the top of the chain three, pull through to slip stitch, make a little chain one, and then we're ready to fasten off because once again we are changing colours. Already you can start to see that beautiful formation that we're looking for. So for round four, we can join in between any cluster of three double crochets. I'm going to move along and join in this one. Just going to insert my hook into the space between these three double crochet clusters or between these granny stitches. Just going to insert and then place my new yarn over my hook or new colour and pull through. Make sure I've got my tail there and then we are ready to start round four. For round four we start again with our chain of three and three and then we're going to work a further three double crochets into the top into the same space as our chain of three. So we yarn over, reinsert into the same space three times, working a further three double crochets. As always, our chain three does count as a double crochet. So now we have one, two, three and four. We're going to skip across the next three stitches. We're going to work in between the spaces of our granny stitches, right in between them there. This time we're working four double crochets into those spaces. So that was one, two, three and four. I'm going to repeat this all the way around, working four double crochets into each of the spaces between these three double crochet clusters. We're increasing them to fours this time. Continue to repeat this all the way around and at the end of round four, you'll have a stitch count of 48 double crochets or 12 clusters of four double crochets. I'll meet you at the end of round four, where we're going to be joining somewhere slightly different. So I'll see you in a moment. 
So at the end of round four, I'm just giving you a sneaky peek of how you could create this teapot cozy for a individual teapot, a two cup teapot. As you can see, we've already reached the size required to go on to the next stage. If you are looking to recreate this as a smaller teapot cozy, head on over to the link in the description box because you'll find the written pattern for this size. But if you needed to make a smaller version, round four is pretty much where you need to get to before you move on to working the sides of your tea cozy. So at the end of round four, you should now have 48 double crochets all the way through with four double crochets into each space around. We still have 12 clusters. This time they have four double crochets in them. As before, we're going to join into the top of our chain three. So one, two, oh, teeny tiny. There we go. And we're just slip stitching to join and then we can fasten off. I've used all four of my colours, so I'm going back to colour A for round five. Now round five is a little bit different in the fact that we are still working into the spaces between our clusters, but this time we're also going to work in between the middle of our cluster as well. So the easiest way to recognise this is to actually start in between one of your clusters. So where you have your cluster of four, you have one, two, and that's where we're going to join. So one stitch, two stitch, we're going in between in between the stitches, not into that top of the stitch, but into that space in between. And we're just inserting straight through the middle. And then I'm going to be joining my yarn there. But you can join in between any pair of stitches. We're going to start with a chain of three. So one, two and three. And this time we're working another, just one more double crochet or UK treble crochet in between these two pairs. So we yarn over and insert. I'm working over my ends again a little bit here. We're then going to yarn over, skip the next two stitches and work into the space between the clusters. So we're inserting where we normally have been, but we're only working two double crochets this time. We skip the next two stitches and work in between the middle of those four. So we've got one, two, and we're going into the space, not the stitch. So we yarn over and we're inserting into the space, not the stitch, to work a further two double crochets. And we're repeating this all the way around. So we're working into the space between the clusters themselves working two double crochets. Then we're working into the middle of the cluster, working between the two pairs of stitches as well. And it will look a little something like that. So working in between there and then in between the clusters themselves. So continue to repeat that all the way around, working two double crochets into, into the space between the two clusters and then two double crochets in between the middle of that, those two pairs of clusters, those two pairs of stitches, should I say, in the four. So you're working bang in the middle of that pair of double crochets. I will meet you at the end of round five. Your stitch count won't change in this round. We're just moving the positioning of these stitches. So we will still have a stitch count of 48 double crochets at the end of round five. I'll see you in a moment. So at the end of round five, you will now have 24 clusters of two double crochets or a total st still the same stitch count of 48. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, two, four, six, eight, 30, two, four, six, eight, 40, two, four, six, and 48. As always, we're going to slip stitch to the top of our chain three, one, two, three. If I can find it, there we are. Slip stitch to join, and of course, I'm getting ready to change colors again, and get ready to add on color B this time, which was my yellow. 
With this round, we can join between any two double crochet cluster. So anywhere you like, really, that looks nice and neat for you. I'm just going to join just in between where I fastened off, place my yarn over and bring it through. For round six, we begin with our chain of three. I'm working over my ends again, as always, and we're working a further two double crochets into the same space between our clusters. So we've got our chain three that counts as our first double crochet, one, two, and three. So we're working around, and this time between each cluster, we are working three double crochets. We're back to our traditional granny stitch cluster of three double crochets. So continue to work around, working three double crochets into each space between the clusters. And I shall meet you at the end of round six, where our stitch count is going to increase from 48 all the way up to 72. I will meet you at the end of round six. So at the end of round six, you should now have a stitch count of 72 double crochets and 24 three double crochet clusters. As always, we're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three to join. And then we can fasten off and pull through. And now, as you can see, I've brought in my four stitch markers. If you're working this up for a six cup teapot, this is where I'd recommend you place your spaces for your spout and your handle. So place your first stitch marker between any clusters, between any pair of clusters. And then we're gonna count around in the direction that we're crocheting. Once we have that first marker placed, we're going to count around 11 clusters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we're going to place, oh, come back, <laughs> place our next marker into that next space between the 11th and 12th cluster. We're going to place another marker into the next space. And then we should have 11 clusters left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we're placing our next marker in between there. So now we have a mark for our spout and our handle. We're going to join where our first marker was placed. So I'm going to insert my hook into the same space between the clusters as that first stitch marker that we placed. And I'm continuing on with colour three, or colour C, should I say. So we're just bringing that colour through. And then we just make a chain of three, one, two, and three. We're then going to work into the next cluster space, working three double crochets. So we yarn over and insert into the next cluster space working three double crochets, one, two, and three. We're gonna repeat that nine more times for a total of 10 three double crochet clusters. So we yarn over and insert and work the next three double crochet cluster. And we're repeating that all the way around to our next marked cluster space. So once we've worked those 10 double crochet, 10, three double crochet clusters, we have our chain three and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We then work two double crochet into the next marked stitch. So that's one and two. I'm going to make a little chain one because we're fastening off and pull through. And then we're skipping this cluster and rejoining into the next marked stitch. 
with the same colour, just continuing the round. So we just join as we did, Oops. making a chain of three into that next marked stitch. So we've fastened off here to create our space, rejoined into the next marked space. We're then going to work three double crochet clusters into each of the next 10 spaces between our clusters. So that's the first one and we're repeating that all the way around to our next marked space and I will meet you there as soon as I've corrected this split yarn. So continue to work your three double crochet clusters into each of the next nine spaces and I shall meet you when you reach your next marked stitch. So once you have worked your chain three and there's ten three double crochet clusters we are going to just work two double crochets into that last marked cluster space so we yarn over insert one and two double crochets once again we're going to fasten off because we're going to change color for our next round just bring that up and you're probably wondering why we're still kind of working in the round but disjointed and the reason for this is if you're working a variegated yarn or a self-striping yarn your colour change will be continuous but it will work with that space in between but for us that are changing colours every round it means that each row is worked in the same direction it's just and it, it, you know you complete your teapot at the same time so it's the best way in my opinion you can work it one side then the other I just find this is the easiest way I'm going to remove my stitch markers just because they the noise irritates me you should now have ignore the ends I hate all these ends I need to weave them in already you should have a space between your last round that you've done at each end with one cluster open effectively so we're now creating a bit of an oval as opposed to a circle so the important thing is when we're rejoining our yarn for round eight is that we're joining into the space next to our starting chain three of the previous round so we have our chain three it doesn't matter which of the chain threes you you join but you see you have two double crochet clusters in the previous cluster your space and then you should have your chain three so we are going to insert our hook into the space between our chain three and that first cluster and then add in our color d or fourth color and then we're going to make a starting chain of three and we are working a second double crochet into or a double crochet into that same space. And then we're going to move into the next cluster space, working three double crochets. So we're working three double crochets into the remaining chain spaces. And we're repeating that all the way around to our last space, working into this last space here, and that's where I will meet you. So we're working three double crochet clusters into each of the cluster spaces, and I will meet you once you've worked your last cluster space, placing that three double crochet cluster. So once you have worked around, working three double crochets into each of the clusters around, you should still have 10 three double crochet clusters and your chain three. So we've got our chain three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And for the last part of this, we are going to be working one double crochet into the top of our last stitch in this section. So there's got one and two, we're working to the top of that last stitch. So we yarn over and insert into the stitch working one double crochet. We can then fasten off to repeat this on the other side of 
our round. So we just rotate, ready to join into that next chain three space. So we're just inserting and repeating those steps again. So I'm rejoining into the chain three space. We begin with our chain of three before working a, uh, another double crochet into that same chain three space. And then we're working three double crochet clusters between the three double crochet clusters. We should be doing 10 of those around. So we're working three double crochets into each of the remaining spaces between the clusters and then I'll meet you for those last for that last stitch of round eight. Once you've worked those next 10 three double crochet clusters, all that's left to do is to work one double crochet into the top of that last stitch from the previous round. We can then fasten off, ready to continue on to round nine. You can really start to see, I know with all these ends it's hard to imagine, but you can see how it's going to come around the teapot itself. Let me grab mine and I will show you. So you can see that it's creating the opening we need for our spout and our handle. Everyone's handle and spout positioning is going to be slightly different. So this is just a nice standard shape. You can see that in theory the opening for this spout is a little bit too high and with me, that's fine because it's not going to release too much heat. The majority of the cosy is going to be covering the teapot, so I'm not overly worried. I'm putting that down and I shouldn't be. Um, but you can see from the handle point of view, it's absolutely perfect. Now this time we are looking to join into the top of our chain three because we have these two double crochets. We're going to join into the top of our chain three. So in inserting our hook, this is for round nine, we're inserting our hook into the top of our chain three and we're using colour one into the top of that chain three. We're pulling through as we would normally and working our chain of three. And then we're working into that first cluster space, working three double crochets. So one. Two and three. Oops. We're going to repeat this all the way around to our last cluster, and I'll meet you to work our final stitches for this round. So we're working three double crochet clusters into each of the cluster spaces around, and I'll meet you shortly for the last part of this section. So once we have worked those 10 double crochet clusters, we've got our chain three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We are then going to place two treble crochets in between the last cluster and that last double crochet from the previous round. So we're just working in between the three double crochet cluster and that last double crochet from the previous round working two double crochet. Once again, we're going to fasten off and rotate to work on the other half and repeat those steps again. So we are joining in the top of that chain three with colour A. Let me just place that new colour over. Make our chain of three before working into those chain, before working into those spaces between the clusters, working three double crochet clusters, repeating that all the way around until we work, until we reach that very final cluster where we're going to be working in between the cluster of three and that final double crochet, placing two double crochets into that final space. I'll meet you in a moment for that final space so we can make sure we've got that and then we can then I can tell you the repeat for the remainder of the height of your teapot. So I've just worked my final three double crochet cluster and I have that last space oops, 
so hard to see with all these ends, isn't it? Move that out of the way. So I have my last space between my final double crochet and the three double crochet cluster from the previous round. And we're working two double crochets in between those that last cluster and that final stitch. As always, we can then fasten off, ready to continue with round 10 onwards. It's no longer a circle, as you can see, because it's starting to flip over. So let me just make that look half decent while we talk about the remainder of the pattern. So for rounds 10 to 16, we're repeating rounds eight and nine, changing color in each round. So I'm going into color B for my next round and so on and so forth until we have a total of 16 rounds. So this was our first round. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We just finished round nine and we have rounds 10 to 16 to go. I'll meet you right at the end of round 16. Do not fasten off round 16 because we're going to start on our edging using that final round to continue straight into our edging. So you just you can fasten off as you go, changing colours as normal, except for round 16. I'm going to meet you right at the end of round 16 where we're going to continue straight into our edging. I will see you shortly once you've worked rounds 10 to 16, changing colour each round, repeating rounds 8 and 9. Everything's time stamped as always, so if you need to, check the chapters to go between rounds 8 and 9, and I'll see you shortly. So at the end of round 16, we're not going to fasten off just yet, because we're going to start to create the finished shape of our teapot. If you're dealing with this many ends as me, I apologise. We're going to sort those out in a moment. But the first thing we need to do is we're going to join the rounds once again. So it's going to kind of create a close for the opening, if that makes sense. So I haven't done my chain one here. We're simply going to slip stitch to the top of the chain three on the end, on the edge, sorry, of the other side. So just inserting our hook into the top of that chain three, slip stitching to join. And then it's up to you whether you fasten off and reattach colour one, or you can continue in your final colour that you've worked and you can just go straight into round 17. I'm going to join my last colour again. So I'm just going to fasten off this last colour and just pull that through, ready to join our final colour. So what we have now is one end that is closed and one end that is open. So for me, the way that I would join this, this was going to be my spout opening. So we now have a closed end that we can put our tea spout through. Oh my goodness, these ends. Let's pretend they're not there for a moment. So we have our opening for our spout and at the bottom it's joined here. And then this side, we can attach a button to close. We've got a couple more rounds to go because we don't want this much teapot exposed. So we're going to just work a couple more rounds that is gonna to help to bring in the shape of this teapot. If you want to, now is a good time to weave in some of these ends. I'm gonna leave mine because I am going to show you how to work an edging around the opening, just to neaten up the ends as well. We're gonna be joining, I tuck these in for a moment, into our unjoined end, and we're gonna join into the top of our chain three. So where we've just joined, we're going to the unopened end, and we're keeping the right side of our pattern facing us. So where your ends are in the middle, that's the wrong side. This is the right side facing. So we're going to join into the top of that chain three because we're continuing to work around now. We're going to do two rows for this section. So we're joining into the top of that chain three with the right side facing. And I'm joining my colour one into the top of that chain three. As always, just bringing it through. We're going to work a chain of three, which does count as a double crochet. We're then going to be working into the top of these stitches this time. And we're going to decrease in this round so that we can reduce the width at the bottom of our tea cozy. So we're going to work 
one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. So we yarn over and insert into the next stitch and work one double crochet. So that's one into the stitch, not the space, two, three, and then four. We're then going to work a double crochet two together across the next two stitches to reduce the count. So we're going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through the first two loops. We yarn over again and this time we're inserting into the next stitch, yarn over to bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through two. You should have three loops on your hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So we yarn over and insert, working a double crochet into the next five. So that was one, two, three, four, and five. And then we work that double crochet two together again. So we yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over to bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, inserting into the next stitch along, yarn over to bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through the first two loops only, leaving three loops on your hook. We yarn over, pull through all three. We're gonna repeat this all the way around so we're going to work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches before working our double crochet two together. When you come to your slip stitch that you joined, skip the space where the join is, just work into those stitches, including the one you slip stitched into. And five, and we should have reached our slip stitch at this point. So we're just going to ignore the slip stitch and decrease into the next two stitches. I'm going to work over that tail. So I'm just going to insert to start my decrease and then into the next one to complete it. So continue to repeat that all the way around until you have just two stitches remaining and we're going to work just two final double crochets into those last two stitches. I'll meet you for those last two in a moment. So I'm just working my final two double crochets after my last decrease to finish the first round of the edging. And you can see that that's brought in the bottom of our tea cozy nicely. So I'm going to fasten off. Now, this is a really good time to check your style of teapot, to check the length of the length required so that's a bit noisy so it's going to pop the tea cozy on it helps if it's not folded you can see how that's really brought in the base of our tea cozy to hug our tea cozy but you see i've got a little bit of space here now obviously you can leave it at this length if you want to i'm going to add one more row but it's completely optional I'm simply going to add a row of uh, single crochets as opposed to another row of treble crochets because I feel that's going to be a little bit too long for this tea cozy, for this teapot, should I say. So to do that, I'm just going to repeat what we did and I'm going to continue in this colour. Just like we did before for the previous round, I'm just going to join in the top of my chain three. And as I said, depending on the length of your tea cozy, you can opt to either do uh, one double crochet, one US double crochet into each stitch around, or like me, I'm going to do one single crochet into each stitch around. And then we're going to add on our loop. So I've done a chain of one just to secure. If you're doing a round, a further round of double crochets, do your chain of three working into the next stitch. If like me, you're working a round of single crochets, we're simply gonna work back into the same stitch that we joined into. 
yarn over to bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through both to work our US single crochet. I'm going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. If you're working your treble crochets, continue on with those. Ooh, double crochet, sorry. And I will meet you to create our button loops at the end of this round. Again, if you need to add even more length, you can continue to repeat this round until you've reached the length for the height of your tea cozy. And I'll see you in a moment at the end of this round to add on our button loops. And then we're gonna move on to a little bit of tidying up with our edging. So I've worked one single crochet into each of these stitches around so that I have the perfect finish for my tea cozy. The last thing to do now is to work a little loop for us to attach a button close. So I'm gonna be sewing a button onto this side here. So I need a loop to attach that button with and close. All we need to do is make a chain of 10. So we yarn over and pull through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. And then to join the loop, we're simply going to slip stitch back into the stitch that we came out of. So I'm just bending my hook down, making sure that I haven't twisted the chain and slip stitching to rejoin the loop. And that creates a very neat and tidy button loop so that we can sew a button onto the other side of our tea cozy. But let's add on a little bit of edging around this opening. Firstly, to hopefully hide some of these ends. And secondly, just to give it a really neat finish. What we're going to be doing for the edging, I'm not fastening off. I'm continuing with this green colour because it's the start and the end of my project. So I'm rotating my work to work along the edging. I still have the right side of my pattern facing so that other ends are all inside. And with my working yarn, we're going to be working into these row ends. So we've already got a slip stitch coming out of that one. I'm just going to work around the post of that last stitch, working a single crochet. Then I can work into the end of the row. And then around the post of the next stitch. I'm working over these ends as I go. And then I'm working into the end of the round into the row, sorry, just to neaten these up. I'm pulling on these ends to keep them nice and tidy and to hide those colour changes. And you can see that it's just giving us a nice, neat edge. This is entirely optional. For me, it means that I don't need to worry quite so much about weaving all these ends in. And it's going to mean that I have a really neat edge to my tea cosy. So you can continue to work all the way around your opening, weaving over those ends and hiding them as much as possible. You can continue that all the way around to the other end and then I'm going to meet you to reattach to do the other opening. So once you have completed that first lot of edging, you can see how neat that works up. And all that's left to do is simply to rejoin in the middle where the slip stitch was. I'm just going to insert my hook again. I have the right side of my project facing me. I'm just going to rejoin to make sure that that right side remains facing. And then I'm simply going to work a single crochet into each stitch around and end of the row again to recreate this beautiful finish. Then I just need to weave any remaining ends and fasten with a button. So I've completed the other side of my edging. I just have three ends remaining. This is the main one for me to worry about because I don't want this coming out or that hole opening too much. So I'm very simply just going to weave around these stitches a few times to secure. You can always use this to secure a bobbin, not a bobbin. You can always use this end to secure a pom-pom if you want to as well. I do like a pom-pom atop a teapot cosy. 
and then once that is securely in I just need to sew a button and then I'm going to pop the kettle on to make myself a nice cup of tea. So thank you as always for joining me for another video tutorial. I will see you in the next video.